if you plan on being a tabletop roleplay game streamer, then you really need to make your stream stand out. You can't just go in with a poorly designed overlay and expect people to watch it. After all, the overlay is the first impression that a potential viewer is going to have of your stream. If it looks bad, or even if it just doesn't stand out, then people are just going to pass right by your stream. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to plan to create a really good overlay that's going to draw people in, and how to make it your own. Hi, I'm Mikey, or as some people call me on Twitch, D Metagame. Today's video is all about overlays. So if you like this kind of content, then please go down below and click that like button, comment, subscribe, share. I'm begging you. It helps me grow the channel. So please help me appease those algorithm gods. But now on to today's video. This video is going to be a precursor to the next video in which I'm going to actually show you how to make the overlay itself. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to plan out the overlay. Sure, we could jump right into making the overlay, but if we plan out the overlay before we get into that step and we have an idea of exactly what to make and where to put every single thing that we want to put in it, then we're going to have an overall better product at the end. The goal here is quality. Instead of just jumping right into it, if you plan it out, you could make a stream go from looking a little bit something like this to something a lot more like this or this. So let's start by asking this. What do you want your stream to show? What type of information do you want to display on your overlay? Maybe you want to display health bars. Maybe you want to display the map on Roll20 or whatever virtual tabletop you're using. Maybe you want a slideshow that's going to appear on the screen and that's going to show maybe character information or lore information or even everybody's social media handles. And you're playing a TTRPG or D&D, so you have to have the chat log so people can see the roles. And of course, how is the audience going to know the names of the players? We have to have lower thirds. And of course, the most important part, all those face cams. Okay, okay, okay wait, wait a minute. minute. That, that is, is way, way too much. much. That brings me to my point. You have so many ideas that you want to get out there and you want to put it on screen. But the problem is, you have to find a way to do it so that you can fit everything that you want without it looking completely clustered. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. You're probably not going to be able to fit everything that you want to see. That's why we're going to prioritize the things that you really want in your stream, and we're going to try to make them look elevated. There's a lot you can do with the D&D &D face cam stream. You could go minimalist, theater of the mind style, or you could go ahead and you could include any number of the things that I just showed you. Hell, there's even a way you can do all of them. You could make multiple different scenes, each one catering to a different scenario, and you could just base it off of that. Maybe the party's role-playing and there's no need to show the map on Roll20. Maybe the party's in a really tactical combat and you want both the map and you want the rolls on screen. Sure, you won't have it all at once, but you will have a variety and you'll be able to change up your overlay multiple times throughout the session. That's why, for the rest of this video, we're going to play around with different scenarios, and we're going to see what type of overlay concepts we can come up with for each of these scenarios. Maybe we'll come up with a few of them. For the first scenario, let's say that you have four players, and of course, five being you, the DM. Well, let's open up Microsoft Paint. Yep, we're going to use a simple program this time, because we're just making a concept. Nothing needs to be accurate, nothing needs to be right, we just need to know where, conceptually, every single box is going to go. Let's start by making three boxes. Um, in each one of these boxes, we're going to make a completely different overlay using the same number of players and DM. Okay, let's start with the first overlay. So, if you look over here, we're going to make six boxes. We're going to make one for each player and one for the DM. And then we're going to put a box right here in the middle. Actually, we'll put two. We'll put one for uh, an information display card, and we could put another box for the dice. And within 20 seconds, we're already done and we've already created an overlay. Now, for the second overlay, we could very easily use the same information and create a completely different looking overlay. So, let's go ahead. This time, we're going to make another six boxes. One for the DM, one for player one, player two, player three, player four, player five. And then we'll make one big vertical rectangle, which is going to be for the dice. This is only going to work because the width of these boxes are longer than the height. So the boxes height-wise will be a little bit smaller and we can fit four of them in there, but we can only fit three horizontally. Then, in the open space, we put a gigantic spot. That's where we're going to put the map for Roll20. 
And just like that, you now have three different overlay concepts, each one based around having five players and, of course, the DM. But what if you have more players? What if you're one of those crazy DMs who have six players or more? Okay, challenge accepted. Let's make one. So this one, we're going to put eight different boxes. We're going to put two bigger boxes on the left. And on the right, we're going to put six smaller boxes. That's going to be the player's face cams. Three on top, three on bottom. The two bigger boxes on the left are going to belong to the Dungeon Master's face cam and the browser source for Roll20 or, again, whatever virtual tabletop you're using. Look familiar? Well, it should, because this is the same format that Critical Role uses. That format's very player-focused. Let's make one that's a little bit more focused around the map. This time, we're going to make nine different boxes. Yeah, a little crazy. We're going to do three boxes on the left, three boxes on the right, and three in the middle. Now, the three on the left and three on the right are going to be the same size, and they're going to be a little short, but a little wide. Those are going to be the player cams. Then, you're going to take one of those player cams, put it in the top center, that's going to be the Dungeon Master cam. Under that, a little bit of a bigger box, which is going to be for the map. And then, right under that, let's put one for the dice, if we have enough room. Now, let's try that again. Let's just rearrange it. Let's make this time, we're going to do the same number. We're going to do three boxes on top, and six boxes on the lower thirds. Now, the box that's on top, the top left, will be the DM face cam. Then we'll put a giant one in the middle, that's going to be the map. And then on the right, we'll put a vertical rectangle. Then under that, we're going to put six smaller player cameras. We're going to have to crop them a little bit when we import those onto OBS. But I'll show you how to do that next time, when we've actually made these overlays. And just like that, you can see how everything is going to come together. And now you have three different varieties on how you can use six players to make an overlay. Now, let's try it with a little bit of a smaller group. You might notice it's actually harder to do it with a smaller group because there's so much more space to fill. Now, for this one, we can actually make a gigantic horizontal rectangular map that's going to show a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to create four boxes on the left side, and then in the center, we're going to put one giant rectangle box... And on the right, we'll put two other boxes. The boxes on the right are going to be for the DM and chat. The one in the middle, obviously the map, and the other ones are the players. Now for the second one, we're going to put four boxes in the bottom. That's going to be for the players. And then we'll put one in the top left for the DM. For some reason, the DM always finds himself at the top left. Or at least close to there. Of course, top center, we'll put the map. And top right, we'll put two boxes. We'll put one for the dice, and we'll put another one for chat. And just a couple seconds, that one is finished. Now, for the last one, we're going to make something really simple because I want to go and break it down even further. And that's actually why we're doing the four-player one last, even though it's a little bit easier. It's just much better for me to show you what we could really do with all of these different player boxes. So, just make five boxes. Two in the left, two in the right, one in the center. The one in the center will belong to the DM. And the four on the sides are going to belong to the players. Nice and simple overlay. Now let's make it more complicated. We're going to draw a very small rectangle under all of the players. This is going to represent their health bars. We'll put a health bar over there. Or maybe we could put their Twitter handles there. Or we could put their real life name. And then we'll put another box on top. That's going to be for their character name. It helps display a lot more information... And we can even change the opacity to make it so that it doesn't really take up much real estate. Although when you're dealing with four players, you have plenty of real estate to give. So even with these nine different overlays that we've created today, we can even micromanage them more. But just like that, we're finished. We've created nine different concepts for overlays. And in my next video, we're going to go over how to make those concepts and turn them into actual overlays that you can use for your D&D stream. But let me end on this note, where I can give you at least a couple of rules to follow so that you can create your own concepts, and not just the ones that I created here on this video. First rule, the more players that you have, the less information you're going to be able to display on screen. The second rule to follow, never forget that the DM gets a face cam too, and not just the players. 
Third step, don't bloat the face cams. At most, display two pieces of information on it, be it the health bars or the names of the characters. Don't go anything more than two things. And finally, keep in mind that the more information you display, the more intimidating it is for someone who's not familiar with D&D or whatever TTRPG that you're playing. If you're someone who primarily streams D&D, then hey, maybe it's worth it to put all that information on the screen. But if you're somebody who normally streams variety games, or maybe you just focus on one other game, and you're just doing D&D as like a one-off thing for maybe a charity, then maybe stick to something with a little bit less information so it's not intimidating for your viewers, especially the ones who have never seen or barely heard about D&D other than, say, Stranger Things or Critical Role. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, if you can, of course, for the algorithm gods, one more time, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you have a suggestion for the next video that you want me to do, then please join the Discord, let me know in there, or even just say down in the comments. If you do leave a comment, I always try to answer them. But that's it for this video. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys next week.